So I was experimenting in Keyshot the other day and I came up with this cool animated material that transforms any opaque material into a cool wireframe material. You can see with some examples on screen, how this material can be applied to any sort of object and it can be customized with different colors and appearances. So I thought it'd be fun to share that with you and show you how to use it. All right, so let's get into it. I've got a key shot file here set up with three different studios. We've got a studio for a Lego minifigure. We've got a studio for a universal ball joint and we've got a studio for a light fixture. And the reason we have these three random objects is because they're all different sizes. The lighting fixture is the biggest, this one's in the middle, this one's the smallest object. And what I wanna do is show you how you can use this animated wireframe material on different sized and shaped models because it is gonna to have to be manually adjusted for the specific model that you're gonna use it on. Now, if you haven't already, you're gonna to want to import this material that I created. It is the animated wireframe material. So you download that from the file vault, I have that linked up below. Then find in Keyshot the folder with the left arrow under the materials tab, that is the import button. Go ahead and click that, find the KMP, that's a Keyshot material package file. This contains the material that I created. You're gonna open that up and it will import it to whatever folder you have selected. So the first thing we're gonna do is just drag this right on over to the Lego minifigure. It's gonna look a little weird, but like I said, this material has to be tweaked a little bit for whatever model you're gonna use it on. So let's double click on it to look at its material properties. So you can see it is a wireframe material to start and then we have actually a label of plastic on top that has been animated. So to open the animation timeline, you hit A on the keyboard or press the little animation button down here and you see this little bar. That means that this is animated. If I scrub along the timeline, you can see the plastic label covers the Lego minifigure. So let's go ahead and look at this material. Before we do that, let's create some room. So I'm gonna close the material panel on the left with a library and I'm gonna drag this project panel over to the left, which just moves this Lego guy over, and I'll get into the material graph here. So here we're looking at the node tree for this material. We have a base material, which is our wireframe, and that's what's creating this appearance here in the real-time view. And then on top of it, we have a layer of plastic. To preview this, I could hit C on the keyboard, and you can see this is the plastic. It's just a slightly rough black plastic. Now, as far as the animated portion of it, we're doing that with something called a color gradient and a curve fade. The color gradient is actually fading between white and black. So if I were to preview that with C, you see it's white and black. Where it's white, it is opaque. Where it's black, it is transparent because we've plugged this into the opacity uh, socket on the plastic material. And then we're using the curve fade to actually animate it over time. And we're gonna break all this down here. So the first thing I wanna do is explain to you how to get the curve fade set up. Basically, if I double click on this, we see it's got this animation curve. And right now it has been correctly set up for this small Lego minifigure. If we click on the first dot on the left, you can see it's set to negative 10 and the dot on the right is set to 15. These are somewhat arbitrary values that need to be adjusted for each sized object that you're going to be using this on. It is related to the scale of the model and also this color gradient has a scale as well. So if we look in the color gradient, the scale is one millimeter. That's the distance between the white and black value here. So that's what's creating this fade from white to black. If we preview this color gradient with C, we could sharpen this up if we were to bring the black and white color stops closer together and we could make them more gradual if we spread them out. If I were to increase this scale to say two, then that's gonna become a bigger gradient. But I'm gonna bring it back down to one for now, and I'll move this on over as well. So we have this color gradient, and it's basically plugged into the opacity of our plastic label. If we wanted to, we could take this plastic, and it could be most other materials that you can use as a label. So you don't wanna to try to use like a glass or a transparent material that won't really work, but you could use say a metal or you could potentially use like a paint or uh, you know metallic paint, things like that to get the different looks that you might want to. Let's take a look at making this look a little bit better. And then I'm going to show you how we have to adjust this curve fade for some of these larger models that we'll use in a minute here. 
So how do we get the rest of this Lego minifigure looking nice? Because this doesn't look that great here. The thing that's interesting is this wireframe is actually drawing lines based on the topology or the actual shape of the mesh. Because I imported this fi Lego figure and uh, well, all of these models as a NURBS based 3D format, I have the option to retessellate that in Keyshot. So I'm gonna right click on the minifigure's body and go to retessellate. This is going to allow me to create a new topology. And topology refers to the arrangement of triangles or polygons that a surface is made of. So if I hit tessellate, you can see that the, the body of the Lego figure here has more of these squares and triangles instead of these long spiky triangles that you see in the real-time view. So if I hit apply, you can see I've retessellated it in the real-time view and it looks more uniform and thus looks a little bit nicer. Now, the way you can play with this is if we increase the tessellation quality, it will generally make smaller, more accurate shapes here. And when we bring this maximum edge length down, it will make, again, smaller uh, triangles. I mean, if that's the look you want, that's fine, but it can also look a little bit too detailed. So I'm finding that tessellation quality of somewhere around 0.1 and maximum edge length of say five, something like this looks pretty good, but it's gonna vary depending on how big the model is. The unfortunate thing is there is no way to automatically retessellate all the parts in Keyshot. It is literally a rinse and repeat action at this time. So hopefully that's something Luxion will address in the near future. So I'm just gonna go ahead and ramble on while I retessellate all these parts so you can see how it works. And you can get some muscle memory in if you do this too. Alrighty, so here we have retessellated our minifigure. He looks a lot better now. The next thing I wanna talk about is this actual wireframe material and how we can modify it. But we're gonna go ahead and work on the next model before we do that. So right now we basically are fading from wireframe material to a black plastic material. Or if you wanted to have it run backwards, you would just basically go into those settings for the curve fade and you would replace these values. So instead of going from negative 10 to 15, what if we go from 15 to negative 10? And you should see that we've basically reversed the direction that that goes, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna jump into the next studio and work on this next piece. I'm gonna bring up my material library once again and just drag this material, default material, onto this part. It's asking me if we want to link it to the other one, meaning the one that we pasted on the Lego figure. And I'm gonna say no, because we're gonna make some changes and remember, when you use this material, it's gonna to need to be unique for each sized model that you use. So this looks pretty cool, but I'm noticing that it's, it's wiping across the model the wrong direction. So let's fix that. How do we do that? Well, in this case, I'm gonna double click on our material and we need to get into that material graph. Remember, the actual fade is happening in the color gradient. So if I preview that with C on the keyboard, we bring up this black and white map and we can click the move texture button and we can simply rotate this holding shift, but it'll snap into 90. And that's looking pretty good. We'll get out of that preview. And now we are at least moving along the correct axis on this model. Now, in order to make it span the entire length of this model, what we're gonna need to do is modify the curve fade. So let's go all the way to the left. And I'm noticing that it looks like it's a little bit uneven. I'm gonna go back in that move texture and rotate it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so inside the curve fade, under animation, we need to move it further to the left. So we're starting out with a value of negative 10. Let's try negative 20. So see how that's going the way we want. Let's go to negative 30, go to negative 40, and that looks like we've moved away far enough. So now if we drag all the way to the right, it's not going far enough. So let's go and change this 15 to say positive 20 or 30 and 40. So because this is a symmetrical part, we needed to go from negative 40 to positive 40 and it worked. So now that we're at least moving in the right direction and far enough, let's look at this model as well. We're going to retessellate this and luckily we don't have to do as many parts here as we did with the Lego minifigure. So I'll go ahead and retessellate these and then we'll look at how to customize the actual appearance of the wireframe material, which is a lot of fun. And we can actually close out the material graph. We don't need to access that because we can 
work on the uh, wireframe material right here in the materials tab. So here we have a color for the wire. This is gonna be the most basic color setting or material setting. So if you want something bright and vibrant, we could change it to that. Uh, this width is in pixels. So if we wanna thicken these lines here, we would increase this value here. So I could go from 0 0.02 to 0 0.05, and now we've got a thicker line. If we go too thick, then it's gonna to start to look a little bit messy. So 0 0.05, 0 0.03 maybe. That's what I'm gonna stick with here. Next we have the base, and this is the color that is uh, visible between all of these lines. So if we were to change this to a different color, then you can see we fill it in with a different color. The base transmission, this is a little bit odd because this is kind of controlling the opacity. So if I go all the way to black, we are not able to see through the part. So this may be the appearance that you want. And then of course we could fill it in with, you know, a solid color. But if we want it to be transparent, then we need to set that base color to black and then the base transmission to white and, that, and then it becomes see-through like that. Then we have a backside base and this is a little bit confusing because it's basically assigning a color to the in between all the lines, but based on the normals direction, it's gonna be the surfaces that are facing away from the camera. So again, in this case, it's gonna look very confusing unless it is matching the same color as our base color. And then backside wire, same thing. This is going to change the color of the wireframe on the surfaces that we can't see. It is very confusing <laughs> if you have two colors. If you just want it to look, I don't know, interesting, I guess that's fine. But one thing I like to do that I think works quite well is you start off with the same color that you have for the wireframe, but then make it darker and um, a little less saturated. And sometimes that can help create some depth. It really depends on the actual colors you're using. It's totally up to you. There's no right way to do this. This is not some physically accurate material. It's just a cool techie sort of look. And I found, generally speaking, that just having a solid colored wire and then the black, white, black, black values, I find these to be the most, um, I don't know, pleasing visually, the most useful, I suppose. So that's how we use this material. And uh, let's just do one more quick example. So we're gonna go into our light fixture and we'll hit M to bring up that material library, drag this onto our parts. Uh, no, we don't wanna link this to the other ones here. I'll go ahead and hit M to hide that again. And right now we're seeing, of course, this tessellation looks kind of odd. It's very, very busy. This is because it's a larger object and it's got a lot of curved surfaces. So it's gonna create a really fine mesh like that, I suppose. On a really complex model like this, I would probably hide some of its internal components and I would also tessellate the internal components at a lower resolution. The first thing we need to do though is fix the animation as well as the orientation of it. Let's get into this material, pop into the material graph. I'll just go to move texture and I'm gonna rotate this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and accept that. And then as far as the color fade, uh, this is a bigger object, so we need to adjust these values here. So for the negative value, I think it's gonna be like negative 75 or something. Looks like that was enough. Let's try positive 75 as well. See if that works. Yeah, that was plenty. Of course, from here on out, you would just be retessellating once again. I would probably, like I said, simplify this as much as I can because you've got all these overlapping parts. It's just gonna become a mess of similarly colored lines. In this case, I might look at the model and let's say I hide this piece, let's say I hide that piece. There's a part on the middle that I think I can just make invisible. So I could just right click and do a hide and lock. And then there's a part here that I can turn off. I think I want that one, but I think this one, I can just do a hide and lock. So go ahead and take this and I'll do the retessellate. And again, if you want it to be less of a fine mesh than this, just go to a smaller value like 0 0.08 and you can see it makes it look even less detailed. So I want that. And then I can hide this piece and look at what's on the inside there. It looks like there's a part in the inside here. I don't need this guy, so I'll just do a hide and lock on that. And actually, I don't want um, any of the LEDs on there, so I'll just do right click and do hide and lock. Let's retessellate this guy here, turn these parts back on. So in the case of this part here that has a ton of really tiny triangles, I'm gonna do a retessellate on this. So they're still taller and skinnier than I want. So I could take this max edge length down to something like two and now they look more uniform. But then I wanna take the tessellation quality down to a smaller value to make them bigger. Let's try 3%, I think that looks pretty good. So now that looks like much simpler mesh. Finally, this part up top, I think that's good enough. And I think we get the picture there. So 
This is what we ended up with. And lastly, if you want to make changes to that base material, that plastic, like I mentioned, you can always come in here and play with the color or the material type. You've got those options as well. So that's how I created this animated wireframe material. Hopefully you found that one interesting. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you use this in your own work, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you do with it. Till next time, happy rendering.